In this review, we take a look at something different from the concrete machinery sector. The real machine is made by Schwing Stetter and is a self-loading mixer. The model number for the real machine is SLM4600 and there's a nice photo of it on the back of the box. Interestingly, the model has been commissioned by Schwing Stetter in India and that's where this machine is particularly popular. If we look underneath, we can see the model is made by NZG and it's model number 1056. Let's put the small box straight on the weigh bridge and it comes in at just over 14 ounces. And that's equivalent to 405 grams. The next stage in our well-trodden process is to open the box and see what's inside. Well, we can already see the model through the window in the box and it's contained in that unusual packaging style that NZG usually uses for its truck models. There is some tape around various parts of this internal packaging, so it's a job again for our sharp knife. And cutting at the bottom doesn't seem to quite do the trick, so we better cut it at the top as well. So having done that, let's now see if we can get to the model. And using our military grade fingernails, we can get the tray removed from the back of the packaging. Still, there's more to do, and we finally pull off the plastic former at the front, and we can lift the model out. There is no assembly to do, and that's because it's complete out of the box. The model flies onto the weigh bridge, and it's 10 ounces, which is 200 and 85 grams. Just a reminder that you can see a lot more about models on the Cranes Etc website and the link to it is in the video description below. Also if you want to know where you can buy scale models then you can click on links on the website including those in the shopping mall. And listed here are dealers that sell models in countries across the world. Looking underneath and there is detailing with the axles modelled and also a drive shaft that links between them. Although there is no obvious linkage to the engine. The NZG logo and model number appear in the castings and other details include an exhaust pipe at the front. The tyres have a medium tread pattern. There's a big windscreen wiper on the cab and the lights are well formed. The front grille also has proper openings and there are large plastic mirrors. The graphics include the SLM 4600 badge. Looking at the side of the cab, the windows are well delineated with their seals and there's a highlighted door handle and a lock. Textured steps lead up. The graphics on the model are very good, they're very sharp and there's detailing within the castings. The small wheels also have some detailing. On the back of the cab there's another windscreen wiper and there's also another mirror and that's used when the driver is facing backwards for self-loading. The air intake for the engine is also modelled. The mixer drum is a nice part because it's all in metal and it has very sharp graphics. At the back the self-loading mechanism is mostly modelled in metal with the hydraulic ram jackets being in plastic. A tiny piece of detailing is that there are black lines highlighted, presumably to represent hoses. The rivet connections are reasonably discreet. At the rear below the drum is a Schwing Stetter graphic and also a modelled discharge chute. Chute extensions are also modelled, but they're not removable. We're back underneath again and each of the wheels spins independently and each axle has independent steering. 
the range of movement of the steering is very good, and that reflects the manoeuvrability of the real machine. Out we go onto the test track, and the model rolls along reasonably well, which is good bearing in mind it's not so heavy. Let's set the steering on both axles to a good hard lock. And when we do that, you can see that this machine really does turn in a very tight circle. So the good thing is, you don't need too much desk space to drive this model about. But it also has a lot more functionality. And that starts by the whole mixer drum assembly rotating. It does that so it can get the concrete put in the right place. And there's also some sideways movement of the chute possible. And the only thing the model lacks in this regard is the ability to extend the chute. The rotation has a full range of movement, probably more than even the real truck has. The metal drum has very good bearings, so you can have fun spinning it around. Another feature of the real machine is the ability to tilt the drum, and this is also provided for on the model. It's interesting functionality, but I'm not really sure why the real machine needs it. But what does set this machine apart is the ability to self-load. So it has a shovel which can be lowered, and then it can scoop up the sand and aggregates that it needs. The real machine also has a weighing mechanism so you can accurately batch up the mix. The scoop can be angled on the hydraulics and raise itself right to a point above the chute. And here is where the model has a bit more functionality. The door to the chute is controlled by a hydraulic ram, and if you're careful, you can raise and lower the door. It's great to see a model of a different kind of machine, and this self-loading mixer by Schwingstetter is certainly different. NZG has done a very good job of modelling it, and as usual the model has a high metal content. The detailing is of a high standard, and there's plenty of functionality which reflects the functionality of the real machine. Overall, it's good enough to be rated as excellent. Mm -hmm. 